You can use the PS1 reverb in your music production and it's free. I'm gonna show you how to do it in any DAW and show you how it could be a game changer in your music. But you might be asking, what do you mean by PS1 reverb? Think about it, if you're playing a game, reverb is added to make it seem as though the sound is happening within that space, such as the hallway. A very smart producer by the name of Shiroban had the great idea of taking these PS1 reverbs and using them for music. They sound like this. This is the plucky chords dry. The studio reverb. The church reverb. And then I really like these two, the dome and the hall reverb. So sick. The impulse responses to use these reverbs are at the start of the pack, but you might be thinking, what is an impulse response? An impulse response reverb is when you take a room, try to capture it, and use a convolution reverb plugin to apply that reverb to anything you want. The easiest way to do this is by popping a balloon in a space and capturing that audio. However, the only way to do it properly is do a sine wave sweep throughout the frequency range and capture how the room responds to all frequencies. A balloon is cool, but what you're really doing is replicating how a room reacts to a balloon popping. Unsurprisingly, Heimbach has a great video on how to do this thoroughly. During editing, I realized that I made the balloons sound like they're bad, but that's not what I was trying to do. I was just trying to describe that the impulse response iceberg goes a lot deeper than just balloon popping. Definitely try it though, it's good. Now this is where it gets very interesting for sound design. You can make anything an impulse response. It's not just reverb. An impulse response is capturing the character of one thing and the convolution reverb combines the two. So for example, I could just record some paper crumpling with my laptop mic and apply it to this ARP from my own free sample pack. It's quite a crazy concept and the best analogy I could think of is with photo editing software. It's like taking this idiot being the original signal and this clown being the impulse response. The convolution reverb is changing the settings on the overlay and boom, that's your final product. Sorry about that. Unfortunately, that's the best way I could describe it. But the takeaway should be everyone should be trying to make their own impulse responses, make some interesting stuff. You can get the PS1 impulse responses on Bandcamp. And as I said, it's free, but technically it's pay whatever you want. So you can do anything from zero upwards. I sent five pound to show support to the producer community, but you can do what you want. You might not be able to afford that. Also, I have no affiliation with Shiroban. I just made this video because I thought what they made was very interesting. To get these impulse responses into Ableton, all you have to do is put the Convolution Reverb Pro plugin on and then drag and drop the file onto the plugin. And if you don't have an Ableton, I'll do the full list. Here we go. Logic has Space Designer. FL Studio has Fruity Convolver. Cubase has Reverence. Studio One has Open Air. And even if your DAW doesn't have one, Convology XT is a free plugin that does the same thing. I haven't used it myself, but everyone's favorite deep voice music producer, Venus Theory, recommends Kilohertz Convolver as one of the best paid options. It looks pretty powerful. I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but finding these reverbs a few years ago was a big part of changing my understanding of what makes a good reverb. At university, I was lucky enough to get taught studio recording and mixing by a guy called Stan Kybert. He's got some pretty crazy credits, recording, mixing and producing on number one albums, etc. And one day in class, he said something along the lines of, ah, D-verb, my favourite bad reverb. And that confused me. Why would he be pulling for the Pro Tools default reverb whenever he has all the best reverbs that money can buy in his arsenal? So I asked, and the response blew my mind. Context. My best example to explain this would be an artist coming up to you and asking, can you record my piano song? And your response would probably be yes. And you'd go to the closest grand piano and mic it up. But what you actually do is say yes. What type of piano song is it? Because it might not be an Adele ballad. It might not need the grand piano. It might be more of a honky tonk vibe. Therefore a battered upright piano that's sat in the corner of a bar is decoration that's slightly out of tune would better suit than the grand piano because context is everything. Around and the same time of having this revelation is when I came across these PS1 reverbs, proving the point. These aren't the best reverbs ever, but the cheap digital style gives it such great character. Side note, I sort of hate name dropping because it comes off with this sort of like validating yourself and what you know by saying you know somebody else. But in this example, I thought I'd give Stan a shout out because I owe a lot of what I know to his lessons. So I have to be very thankful of that. Definitely check him out. Links to both my free sample pack, which samples my vintage organ, and the pack with the PS1 reverbs in the description. I definitely recommend trying them together because an analog organ one shot mixed with a PS1 reverb is bound to give you some interesting textures. Everything I've mentioned will be linked below. Subscribe if you're handsome. Thanks for watching.